from everything, from cars to cans, Novellus is one of the top suppliers of aluminum. So where are prices going and is demand going to pick up? For some answers, we're joined now by Phil Martent, CEO of Novellus, joins us live from Atlanta. Phil, welcome to In Business. I know you just got back from China last night. Tell me what you saw there. What is consumer and what is industrial demand like right now? You know, demand in China I still view as pretty stable. When you think about a GDP running 7 to 8 percent and you actually see that coming through in the order book, as we've looked at it, short term and long term, we still think it's a very stable, strong economy, even though it's going to have quarter to quarter fluctuations like we're seeing. And what type of usage are you seeing of the aluminum product? We're seeing it all, the, all across the board, Margaret. When you really look at it, we announced yesterday uh, in the province of Zhengzhou the first automotive heat treatment line, which really is in response to the automotive growth and the use of aluminum in that sector. But if you go across the range in terms of consumer packaging and consumer durables, either electronics or beverage cans, uh, frankly, we're still at a point where long-term demand is a concern of ours in terms of our ability to keep up. So I, I think we're very bullish on it. We will continue to be so. And I think the economy, from the perspective I saw when I was there, and I've been there a few times this year, is going to support that. Now, you were just talking about aluminum cans. Um, in terms of product demand, even in the U.S., it seems like there's a shift among beer producers from bottles to cans. What does that shift yep. uh, do to? Oh, I, you know, it's uh, clearly an acceptance of uh, aluminum beverage cans in the craft beer market. You know, typically it's a high volume package like a Budweiser or Miller Lite or Coors that will pick up the can. But now we're seeing the craft brewers um, actually pick it up and start to actually market it as a premium product. It does package better, it does ship more efficiently, it's more recyclable, and there's a lot of advantages for aluminum from a producer point of view. But I think ultimately the consumer is now accepting it. And that for us is very good news. And we think we're seeing that not only in the U.S., but also in Europe. But how are you dealing with like near record premiums on the aluminum that you're using, particularly here in the U.S. or in North America? You know, as we look at that, if you talk about the price of LME and the, the cost issues that go along with that, Clearly, that is something we monitor day in and day out, and we do expect over time LME to continue to climb up as we deal with the inventory levels and the slow bleed out of that's going to happen over a period of time. But what, what you know, is right that now, supply LME issue due to? Because there are traders who say that there's hoarding happening with warehouse owners. I mean, what are you seeing? I think it is happening. We've been very public that the uh, warehousing of aluminum really is not a what we would call an efficient market process. And as we look at it and deal with our commentary on that in the public, we're view, our view is that there needs to be some relaxation around that from the LME. And we also think that ultimately the inventoried metal can't be tied up due to financial arrangements. It has to flow to the market in a natural way. And, you know, today we're seeing some relaxation, but nothing that's going to drive the prices down. And frankly, we see a continuation of the current practice. So you do see deliberately uh, limiting supply to the market? You know, I, I think deliberate is a strong word, but I think there's some constraints put on it, given the financial arrangements around the inventorying that mm -hmm. goes on. I do think if you look at the big producers, whether it be Alcoa or Rio Tinto, Alcan, you know, I think they're aware of that in terms of that in principle, but, you know, we're dealing with a huge inventory here that's held out of the marketplace yeah. that really should flow to the market. All right. Phil Mardin, thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate right, it. We got to leave it there.